Good morning to you. It's Daybreak at iFiber One News Radio, Thursday morning, 845. We take this time to focus on Shelton, two great guests, talking Prop 1, which you will see on your November ballot for residents in the city of Shelton. It's City Manager Ryan Wheaton and Communications and Economic Development Officer Andy Arness. Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning. Good to see you in studio here today, uh, talking Prop 1. Shelton Government Reorganization. This is a big deal for the city, so uh, good to start these conversations now as uh, before too long, we'll be voting on this. Everybody will be voting very shortly, so about a month from now, you'll see the ballots come out, and then obviously the election deadline is the first Tuesday in November. This information that we just put out through social media, Andy got it up both on our website and on our Facebook page, is the basic information that we put out for any uh, ballot measure that's run in the city limits. So okay. People can go online and check that out now, and then we'll also put it out with utility bills, which is normal for a ballot measure. This one's a little bit different because it was generated from citizens. It was a citizen petition that was put on the ballot, and it's the first one that anybody at the office, we have a number of years of experience, can remember actually coming that direction. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. That's in so all have come from the commission, the current way it's made up now? The ones that we can, we can find that have been done since anybody at the city's currently there has been around have all come from the commission so this would definitely um revamp and change the face of how the uh, government is worked in shelton give me a kind of an overview of where we're at now and where we could go if it's passed sure so the city had a council up until the 40s switched to a commission three-person commission and at the time those three people that were elected ran three departments. So the commissioners right now and in the 40s were commissioners of finance, public safety, and also public works. The uh, public safety commissioner also serves as the mayor and is directly hmm. elected. It's been that way since the 40s, as I mentioned. We are the last commission. So Raymond and I think Wenatchee are the, the last two that, that moved and they did that so. in the late 90s. So for the last 20 years, it's been us <clears throat> alone. And currently, there are still those three commissioner seats. And then we operate a little bit differently than how things were done in the 40s because we obviously have a city manager and we've had an executive in that role working for the commissioners directly for at least 30 years. Wow. We've done that. And now the question is, does the city want to go to a seven-person council and a city manager form of government? In that situation, you'd have seven people elected directly as council members. We have two that would stay on in their current terms, but would become council members. And from those seven people, like the other council manager forms of government throughout the state, those seven people would elect or choose somebody from amongst themselves to be the mayor and, and serve in that role, similar to how the mayor operates now. It just wouldn't be directly elected by the citizens. Oh. And then in doing so, there would be a, a, a fairly uh, healthy process that would take place between November and likely April and then moving into May until those people are actually seated because we'd have to do an election in February and in a general in April. And we would actually, if it passed, the city would become council manager form of government when those seven people are actually seated. Oh, so even if it's passed here in November, there's still some more legwork that needs to be done right. through the year to get all the seven. Yeah, we would go for pretty quickly. People would have to file to run for the extra seat. So there'd be four seats that would open up. And the commission, the current commission, would work through some of the changes that they would have to do procedurally and also through our code to make sure that we were ready to go. Election would be in February if, if needed, if we need to run a primary, but the general would be April, and I would expect that those people would be suited or seated soon after that. Wow. Okay. So um, currently we're well, – so first things first, so seven. Is that the standard number? Was that what was written into the citizen petition? Or could it have been five or could it have been nine? Do you have to have an odd number? So an odd number certainly helps to, to get a majority. Right, right. In this case, seven is required for a city our size. And we're not, we're not close to being able to go down to five. So seven is our only option here in terms of the, the number of council members that we'd have. Who would be the one, if this passes, to set the districts? And how is that set? That would be a commission decision in all likelihood. We don't have districts now, and I don't know that they would look to do that. Uh, population might not make sense for us to split up the city into mm. a number of districts. But like I said, all those questions, uh, salary questions, actual 
proposing that the election take place, all those would go through the current commission and they would work through those questions at the end of this year. What would be, obviously one of the struggles that a three-person uh, council or commission has is, is the inability to talk with each other to come with, with a consensus. If two people are together, it's an open meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that. So that seems on its face a good way to uh, propose and move forward city business. Are there other benefits that you've seen talking to other city managers around the state that, that have come from this uh, that, that we have not had the luxury of over the last couple decades? The, I'm not sure if it's a benefit or not. It's I guess it depends on how you look at it. But Depending on yeah the votes and how that right. goes. Right, and that, that's really the thing that other cities talk about. When I see that meetings, they ask, how does your commission work through open public meetings? And it's difficult because, as you just mentioned, if they're in a room together, if they're talking over email, if they are talking on the phone, that's considered an open public meeting, and we have to notice that meeting. And so you have people that know that have known each other, Gary, Tracy, and Kathy. Currently, they've known each other for years. Oh yeah. And they get into office, and all of a sudden, they, they can't speak outside of the public meeting. So that's difficult, and I, that is one thing that would change. And whether or not that's a benefit and that plays into people's consideration, we'll find out in November. Is this one of the things that folks likely talk about for Shelton Out Loud coming up? And then there was a change on sure. that date to uh, that yes. we want to talk about. Yeah, so we, we switched the date just because there were some other events in the community just made more sense to do that. So okay. we moved it uh, to push it back. I guess that was two weeks. Um, it is now scheduled for uh, Wednesday, September 27th at 6 o'clock, still at the Civic Center. Um, and, you know, we haven't heard anything of feedback. That obviously wasn't anything that we saw on the survey, but I'm assuming that we will probably get some questions and be ready to address that for sure. So, seems to like even though you're adding you would potentially add more people to the conversations if you're able to do some work before the meetings it could maybe make the meetings a little uh, faster too I mean if you're not having to work through these processes because it's the first time all three people have come together does that is that have you seen that or heard about that that it helps in the meeting generally you'll, times? you'll have committees so you may have a public safety committee Public works. There, they're gonna. There would likely be committees where you can have one, two, three potentially, or if you wanted to open up to the public, you could have more than that. But you could certainly have council members in other cities. You, it's common if you're in Aberdeen or Centralia or Port Orchard, one of these cities, if Thurston County cities, you will likely see that there are committees set up to address issues, work on them, and then bring them back to the full board. Okay. Okay. And then how will it w impact your position as city manager? What will you do t as a city manager if this passes? That is a great question. Uh, I think that it probably operates very similar to how it does now. Okay. I work for the commission now. I work for all three com uh, commissioners. And if this were to go to seven, I would, or the person in my seat, I, I would assume it's me. But let's, if it's let's hope. Knock on the, at any point, the person as city manager would work for the seven people and do the same thing that I do now. They would manage the operations of the city as explained and directed by the, at that point, council, or if it stays the same, by the Commission of Three. Last week or two weeks ago, uh, Mark Ziegler and Robert Wilson Haas were on. We talked about the why and how exciting that is. What's the feel in the city, in the in City Hall down at 525 West Coda that, that this is a potential, this is a, in, in the future for the city? Mark Ziegler, he said a, a generational change yeah. when the why comes to town. Well, the only problem I have is explain to our employees that I don't know where they go to get their Y membership card right now, <laughs> and we're a little we're a little ways away from that. Yeah. But I think it's fair to say that the general sense at the city is that this is a very exciting time. And I think that our employees are proud that we're going to take part and be a partner, a true partner in this process as we go along. But literally, it cannot come soon enough for the people that work at the city. Yeah, very cool. All right, so you will see this. And all right, one more question, I guess. Is the city taking a position on position one, or are you just putting forth all the information? No position. And letting just, the folks. We're doing our duty to put out the general information, and I think that when people take a look at that, they can they can see the nuts and bolts of what they're looking at in November. So on November 7th, you will see on the ballot the title, the city, the Shelton City Commission passed resolution number 1105-0717 to allow voters to decide whether the city should change its form of government Shall the city abandon the commission form of government and adopt the council manager form of government? You'll have a chance to vote yes mm -hmm. or no. Uh, people writing, 
in for the pro side and the con side on the pamphlets and things like that? I don't actually believe the county's printing a book this year. Huh. And because it's online, they're only taking candidate statements. So they won't actually have anything. They won't have a yes or no for this. Okay. Very good. Focus on Shelton this week and every week is brought to you by our community credit union, Ryan Wheaton and Aaron S. Good to see you guys. Likewise. Likewise have a good weekend. You Thanks. too.